the Holy Trinity, one God, who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Looking to the light of God, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in peace. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Thank you. 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and to command the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace be yours in this Christian New Year, this first Sunday of Advent. Amen. We could begin with a little lightheartedness, don't you agree? So here is a true story. It made the rounds on social media these last three days. On Thanksgiving Day, 
Bob and Carol did not hear their daughter Emily ringing the doorbell. She rang and she rang. She called them from her cell phone. Then she went back to ringing and back to the cell phone. She did this several times. She knew they were home and she knew why they were not answering the door. It was because they were taking a shower together, cheek to cheek, so to speak. They've done this every day for 45 years, though the time in which they would do it during the day might change. Every day. Emily knew that. That's why she was crying with laughter while standing outside on the front porch. And when Bob finally answered the door, he was in his bathroom, still sort of wet. He saw his daughter and then he yelled, Carol, put your robe on. Emily is here with a pie. Later, when their laughter subsided, Bob and Carol told Emily that she could go right ahead and tell the universe what happened. They didn't care. They were proud of their daily practice. After 45 years, to still be with each other in this way. And imagine all the water they saved as well. One normally would not think of a story such as this as apocalyptic. Though apocalyptic these days could qualify as nonfiction. But the word fits. It literally means an uncovering, a revelation. So one might say, here indeed, if the bathrobe fits. So for the lighter heart, if even for some this would seem forced in a sermon, this nonfiction apocalyptic story just might broach the question, how will Christ find us? when he returns. Will we be comfortable to the fullest natural degree when we are so visited? Maybe as importantly, will Jesus bring pie? How long, more seriously, must we wait for the full revelation of God. A few days, a season, a year of COVID months, a lifetime, 40 years after Jesus had promised that all things would happen inside this generation, as with Mark's congregation still waiting for that return, a diaspora, like ever since Jews and Christians mourned the loss of the temple and began to have to find their spiritual homes around a growing world. Beginning today, again, we are encouraged in another season of Advent to wait, as if we have not waited enough for good things to happen in the endless year of 2020. If any year can test my own claim and feeling that Advent is my personally favorite liturgical season, well, 2020 is the test. I've had harbingers before, but not like this. All of this 2020 has been an Advent season, hasn't it? Preparing, waiting, lamenting, preparing. But it's been a bit like Lent, too. And I've had those mashed up seasons, Advent and Lent, all at the same time. Preparing, waiting, lamenting, repenting, suffering. 
with other things happening too. And then wash and rinse and repeat. I don't need to spell out the content of the suffering and the lamenting for us. We've had commonly enough that we can intuit with each other what that content is. And if any of us are still disposed to deny that this has been an Advent Lent like mashup, then I'm totally with the philosopher William James when he said that some people are born with an extra glass of champagne to their credit. And he did not mean that all in a good way. Well, Advent is supposed to be about waiting and anticipating and preparing, traditionally in such a way that we are amplifying joy before its birthing time. This, for me at least, this Advent seems severely present tense. It is hardly anticipatory, more of a Bill Murray Groundhog Day-like character our sequestered lives have been. And if we do anticipate, to what are we looking? Well, yes, a COVID Christmas will be. No wonder Christmas decorations and trees went up in homes almost immediately after Halloween, and not just in the commercial places. And with standard time re-enveloping us, I've seen it all the more. So people have been responding that we need some change, at least in the lighting, some change in our character of waiting and waiting. Even in my own household, we are way ahead of our usual time of green and red colors and a crash. I know someone who listens to brass instrumentations of Christmas carols year-round. He does that to attune his spiritual eyesight. And there is something healthy about that. We each can have our ways. Surely we need a practiced and active watchfulness so that we can come to really see what's going on behind things, to see the deceit behind pandemic and more that serves the few at the expense, such high expense of so many. And surely we can be truer to the divine impulse to take up the practices that redeem these less welcome moments. For that is where Christ shows up. Watchfulness helps us to learn to see better and to identify as they happen those moments of holy gravity of Christ's promises. And where the promise of Christ is, there is Christ himself. So I won't criticize the decision to anticipate, anticipate joy ahead of its appointed time. Maybe the appointed time, as in a real advent, is indeed found just through such habituated anticipation. In the Gospel text today, Jesus exhorts us to pay attention to the signs of the times. Fig trees have their seasons. A temple will be destroyed. Adherents to Judaism will be dispersed and have to adapt to new forms of faithfulness. Christians will need to learn not just to sing, but to live by listening to encouraging letters and Gospel lessons and worship together whenever and wherever possible, sometimes in deep caves as with tombs, other times at home or on a vast 
lawn. In the meantime, both destructive and healing authorities will show themselves with predictable eminence and unpredictable surprise. But only God, only God knows at what hour and day lives will be made whole and new. Only God knows. So how sad and losing it is for purported Christians to waste their time calculating and credulously pulling their imagined levers of history so to force God into their schemes and into their book profits. But we who are here are here to ponder the times. We are called to attend closely to more natural, God-created things, like seeing the changed shape of a pet's ear perk up, signaling something new afoot, or like noticing the oh so slowly, or maybe suddenly changing patterns in a dear one's voice. Or like finding something new and cherishable in 45 years of changing weight and skin and bones together in a shower. All this is a matter of insistent and finally proud watchfulness in every moment, not of so looking always to an artificial future such that we miss the Christ already here well before his time. Here, even this Lent-like Advent, here, even naturally, perhaps not with a dramatic arrival heralded by a trumpet, but with enough of an apocalypse as when doing something preciously natural, then to hear the ringing at the door. So come, Lord Jesus, keep us watchful for your extraordinary, deep in the ordinary, and please bring pie. Amen.
Andreas, Torsten, Grace, Peter, Hilda, Lisa, Maureen, Nancy, Nicholas, Johnny, Matthew, Karen, Wendy, Jan, Kelly, Richard, and Franz, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. God of power and light, come quickly to this weary world and restore all for whom we pray with mercy and justice. We pray for the gifts, the insight, knowledge, and ministry of grace we share in Christ's name. Attune the work of our hands to the needs of the world around us as you draw near to us with your peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the restoration of delicate ecosystems and the flourishing of species which you have made. Renew habitats altered by the changing seasons or by pollution. Awaken us to our charge of stewarding your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for individuals and nonprofit organizations that care for our neighbors in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome to those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the faithful witness and spirit of our congregation as we celebrate 75 years of mission outreach. Bless all the ministries of our congregation, especially those during this anniversary month. Empower our partners with healing and hope in their witness to your boundless love and saving power. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks, O oh God, for the birth of Mara Beth Riemert, daughter of Ben and Lindsay Riemert, Asher's sister. Bless her and her family richly for a life in your ways and for your world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for individuals and families living with in the cycles of depression anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Support all who struggle in mind, body, and spirit, especially Jessica Carpenter, John Stokes, Jared, Jacqueline, Gemma, and Jay McNelly Varghese, and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and the witness of those who died while waiting for your coming in peace. 
May your face shine upon those who have gone before us, especially Susie Ahrens, Betty Bauer's friend, and Jim Whitehead, Lynn and Alex Rosa's friend. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Amen. Amen. God. Come, Lord Amen. Jesus. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice of justice and joy of your Son. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Good morning, Christ the King Lutheran Church from the First Family here in Austin, Texas. My name is Pastor Brad First, and I served as the Lutheran campus pastor at the University of Houston, Rice University, and the Texas Medical Center for 8.5 years. Just a drop in the bucket of the 75 years of ministry y'all have been doing there and in Houston. Yeah, the name of the town is Houston, Texas. <laughs> All of us have uh, fond memories of, of our time there. Uh, what are your favorite memories? Uh, my favorite mem memory is the music. The music. Mine is the baptismal font. Mine is definitely the organ. Yeah, we have so many um, favorites. I would say I loved Wednesday night mm. dinners and the um, music classes with our little babies. That was so fun and a great way mm. to make some friends in the church. Taylor and I began our family there in Houston, and you all got to watch it. You had front row seats as we were struggling through worship. We had all three of our, our kids were baptized uh, there at Christ the King. Uh, it was my first call, and I have to say that uh, we, you have a very special place in our heart. There are so many things we can celebrate with you that you have allowed God to do you do uh, in you and through you there at the corner of Rice Boulevard and Greenbrier. Um, I, uh, in the spirit of Advent, though, I think we should probably have a forward gaze that we begin Advent always thinking about God's future and when God will come again. And certainly in these turbulent times, we've all been just very, very uh, glad to see how your community has has latched onto this identity as a healing place there in Houston. It's so very important, especially in these times, that people in Houston have a place to come where they can experience the good news of Jesus, be made whole, and have a community of loving people who will come alongside them as y'all came alongside us while we were in, in Houston to love us and to show grace, to execute the worship with, with exactness and beauty. <laughs> um, and oh, the beauty that we experienced when we were with you. Uh, we'll always cherish that and we do look forward to what God will do next there at Christ the King Lutheran Church. With that, we all want to say on the count of three, one, two, three, happy 75th anniversary, anniversary. Christ, Christ the King, King Lutheran, Lutheran Church. Church. <laughs> Lutheran. <laughs>